everybody, and welcome to Nalanon. This week we're going to get Wicked From classics to children's books, you never know what she's gonna cook when Russian makes Nalanon. So, last weekend, a girlfriend of mine had an extra ticket to the musical Wicked, which if you've never seen it, it's based on kind of like a prequel to The Wizard of Oz, and of course they take their own liberties with it, but there was actually a book that it came from, these really cool stories, and I remember reading those books and I really enjoying them, and so getting to see the musical in full color was just like, oh my god, I have to cook something from this. So it is a book, but I also was really inspired by Wicked the Musical. And so we're going to use a lot of things that represent the Wicked Witch, green things, some peppers and some tomatillos, and that represent other characters and other themes throughout the book, and we'll go through that. So let's go ahead and get started, and what we're going to make this week to go with Wicked is a Wicked Good Enchilada Casserole. The first thing you need to do is you need to roast our main vegetables that are going to go into the sauce. So I have three of these chili peppers. Sometimes they're called Anaheim, sometimes they're called... Um, can't remember, but they're kind of a milder chili. They're not super, super spicy, but they give a little tiny bit of a kick. I'm going to take my green peppers and just cut off the stem and make one little slit down the middle. And I'm just gonna open it up and put it onto my sheet here. So just one little slit, cut off the top. Open it up, keep the seeds in there. That's what gives it a little bit of spice. A lot of people think that tomatillos are tomatoes. They're actually in the gooseberry family. How fantastic is that? And they have this fun little extra skin. And you always know that the tomatillos are ripe when the skin is loose from the berry or from the fruit. That means that the fruit actually grew and, and popped off the outer casing. So that's a good way to tell. I'm just using two of these. Take off the outer skin. We're going to cut them right down the middle, put those face up on our sheet, and last thing, we need some garlic. Now, we're going to put some garlic on here, but because the garlic is so much smaller than the rest of it, I don't want to burn this to a crisp, because we're going to put this under a broiler. So I'm going to take, I don't know, five or six good sized cloves, put it in a little piece of tin foil and just drizzle a little tiny bit of olive oil in there. And then make, just gather it up and make like a little net. So kind of keep it together so it doesn't crisp up way too fast. But we want to roast it. Put that on there. We're gonna do the same thing. Just a little bit of olive oil goes a long way. Drizzle, drizzle. Rub it in. We have all of our stuff coated in oh, ice skating, <laughs> the oil. We're going to stick these in the oven under the broiler until it starts to see a nice char form on the outsides of all of it. And while that is getting a nice and brown and broiled, we're going to slice up a little bit of this zucchini. Now this does not look like your typical zucchini. It's a little bit bigger, it's thicker, it's got different speckles. Now I actually went to the Chinese grocery store last weekend and I love exploring funky uh, different uh, ethnicities. Uh, there's everything you can think of they have in that grocery store. And they had Mexican zucchini or squash, which is pretty much the same thing as your Italian squash or other squash. See it's got the same kind of inside, looks the same. But it's fun to try new vegetables. That may sound very strange, but it really is. And what we're going to do is this. We're actually going to cook this into our enchiladas, which when it comes out is going to be this nice layered, almost like a lasagna, but with some different ingredients. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grate this up, and I want some bigger pieces. So it's the other, a little bit bigger grate. So I want the bigger side of my grater. This is a great way to sneak vegetables into stuff so people don't, you know, like if you have kids or a spouse or yourself, like you're really kind of picky about textures or, ooh, but you have a hard time getting your vegetables in. Grating a vegetable and adding them to sauces or casseroles is a great way to sneak them in there and make sure we're all getting what we need to get. Zucchini is a 
great one too because it really kind of takes on the taste of whatever dish you're cooking. This, I'm just going to keep this in a nice little pile off the side so we can use that later. The other thing we can do while waiting is cook up our meat. I'm going to use a ground beef and I buy really good ground beef from our from the uh, deli, but you buy whatever you like. Um, I don't care. It doesn't really matter if it's 80, 20, 93. I don't care. Whatever you like. I'm going to take a pound of ground beef and I'm going to just cook it up. Let that get happy. Let that get happy in the heat. I'm not going to add extra oil or anything like that because the meat itself will produce its own fat that I can use to cook it in. So just let it kind of cook a little bit. Now, if you want chicken, you can do the same thing with chicken. If you want tofu, you could do tofu. You could really do this all vegetables if you wanted to make it vegetarian. If you are doing chicken, make sure you add some oil because there's not enough fat in there to really give it a nice cook. Once the burger starts to cook and I get some nice of that burger juice on the bottom, I want to add some chopped onion, probably about a quarter cup. Add some, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. I'm gonna add some cumin, which is a great like Latin spice. Give it some of that Mexican flair. And just move it around. Once the majority of the meat isn't pink anymore, once it starts to brown, I'm gonna add in all of that zucchini that I grated. Mix it up, the zucchini's gonna cook down, take on all the juices and the, the flavors that we've already put in there. Okay, so our burger is completely cooked. The zucchini still has a little bit of a crunch to it, which is okay, because it's still gonna cook more when it, we put it in the oven. So I'm just gonna take it off the heat and I'll let that cool down a little bit. I'm also drinking my green tea. And a theme. Okay, so next we're gonna make the sauce. Now our roasted veggies that are still kinda getting happy and toasty and suntanned in the oven are not done yet. So by the time we get the, the sauce done, they'll be ready to put in there to add to finalize it. Now, what we're gonna make is just a basic white sauce. Um, it's also called a bechamel sometimes, but bechamel usually means that you have nutmeg and stuff in there. We're not making a plain white sauce. And the great thing about white sauce is this is a basic sauce you could add anything to. Uh, this is the sauce I use when I make homemade um, cheesy au gratin potatoes, homemade uh, mac and cheese, anything you want to put a sauce in. You can throw cheese in there, you can throw a lot of different things in there and make a sauce. This is a basic sauce that you can customize however you want. So all I need is some butter. The rule of thumb on this white sauce is equal amounts butter to flour to milk. So what I mean by that is I'm going to put in two tablespoons of butter or margarine if you don't like butter. I'll let that melt. I want the butter to burn. So you want to, as soon as you get the butter melted, I'm going to add in two tablespoons. So the same amount of butter. I'm going to use the same amount of flour. Then I'm going to move that flour around in the butter. You'll see it starts to get all clumpy like you're making cookies or pie crust or something. See how it's turning brown? That means it's cooking and that's what we want. I'll show you one a second. So I'm going to let that continue to do that just for another minute. And then once it's been cooking in there and getting brown, don't, don't burn it. You want to add milk. So I have two, I have a tablespoon, two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of flour. I want two cups of milk. Okay, so if I wanted to have three cups of sauce, I would need three tablespoons of butter and three tablespoons of flour. That's math, not really. That milk's gonna start to come to a boil and I want to quickly incorporate that cooked butter and flour into the milk. Mix it up really good. And when that milk comes up to a boil, you're gonna have a thick, creamy sauce. That all, and then you could add a little salt and pepper. If you wanted to just put this, this white sauce over vegetables is really good, but you can add all kinds of different flavors to it. And customize it how you want. You could make put curry in there, you could put garlic in there, you could put whatever you like in there. You wanna keep stirring it. 
because you don't want that milk to burn. You get this gross burnt skin on the bottom of the, and the whole thing tastes burnt. It's not good. All right. And I'm gonna get ready my cream cheese. You could use whatever kind of cream cheese you like. Low fat, no fat, whatever. I say life's too short for fat-free cheese. I don't care what kind of cheese it is. It's soft, so it's room temperature. In uh, Mexican cooking, they use something called queso fresco, which is, it's a white cheese. It's a very, like, doesn't have a super, super heavy flavor, but it's really creamy and good. And we're gonna kind of save on some calories and save on some cost by using cream cheese. So as you can see, it's coming up to a boil, and you see how thick it is? Take that off the burner, and I'm gonna start incorporating my cream cheese. Just put a little bit in there and start stirring it. Now again, if you wanted to make a different kind of cream cheese, if you wanted to put cheddar in here, you absolutely could do that. You just put whatever kind of cheese you want and melt it in to the sauce that you've already made. Stirring it until the clumps go away. My husband makes a great version of this casserole with a red enchilada sauce and um, cheddar cheese. Oh my god, it's so good. It's like Mexican lasagna. Yeah. But we're doing a white version for our wicked, for our wicked theme. Look how nice and thick and creamy that looks. And you didn't use any heavy cream. You didn't use any heavy cream. I'm gonna take that off the heat. And now we're just waiting for our veggies, which should be ready to come out of the oven. Perfect, look at that. You know how I know they're perfect? Because look, see how they're kind of even, they're broken down. They got that nice char, everything's got a nice char on it. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna get that flaky skin off of there. It's kinda like wallpaper, once you get good at it, you can get it off in big sheets. All right, now the tomatillos really are good just like they are. There's like no char on there I need to worry about. The garlic, I'm just gonna take it out and run my knife through it. It's gonna be soft. Mushy. I love taking cloves of garlic like this and spraying it on a warm like piece of bread. You can smash it if you wanted. Okay, we're gonna smash that up a little bit. Okay, now we've got all of this roasted stuff. That looks like a big pile of mess right now. I have one of those little quick chopping blenders. You can use a, your regular blender, if you food process, or whatever you want. And I'm gonna take all of that garlic, tomatillos, the green peppers, plop them in there. Oh, it smells so amazing. So you've got green pepper, or the green chili peppers, you've got the tomatillos in there, they're roasted, the garlic. You could literally let this cool down and make salsa out of this. Or, guess what? If you don't wanna to go to all this trouble, you could buy a jar of green tomatillo salsa and do the same thing, but so much better homemade. All right, so we're gonna take our sauce and we're going to dump all of that right into it. We're mixing good and evil, spicy and creamy. All right, I want every drop. Mix that up. Look how good that looks. Now we need to put together our casserole. All right, I just buy white corn tortillas, and the great thing about white corn, about corn tortillas is I am gluten intolerant, and corn tortillas pretty much just have corn and water, so I can eat them. Eat them, I shall. Okay, a stack of those. You don't want to cook them. You don't need to fry them. You want them just raw as they come out of the package. I'm gonna take a little bit of that sauce and put it on the bottom. This just helps things not to stick or burn. 
gonna take your corn tortilla. You're gonna lay them in there. So I got two there. Great thing about these is they cut in half, break them in half. Ta-da. I'm gonna put your meat. And then that beautiful cheese sauce with all of those roasted yummy peppers and tomatillos. Then, now because we put the halves on this side that time, we're gonna put the halves on the other side just so it staggers it. So tortilla, tortilla, break it in half. And then you've got half, half. We're just gonna layer this until we get all, we're just gonna layer this until we get all the meat and all the cheese and stuff taken up, so. Now if you're like my husband, you're gonna say, well, what about the sprinkly cheese? What about the grated cheese? You could add more cheese to this. I would add a milder white cheese, but because there's cheese in the sauce, I thought that would be okay. All right, we're finishing up our last gorgeousness layer. I'm just gonna pour the remaining cheese sauce over the top. Okay, and just to give it some color, because I like to have colorful foods, make things more interesting, I'm just gonna take that remaining tomatillo and I'm just gonna sprinkle that, just that pure roasted goodness on top. And then just spread it around a little bit, give it a little extra color, punch of flavor, because you just have that raw concentrated roasted vegetable on top. Okay, we're now ready to cook this. I'm gonna put this in the oven at about 400 degrees for about just about a half an hour. You'll notice it'll start to get a little bit of brown and, and you'll see when it's good and bubbly and yummy that it's ready to eat. See you back in 45 minutes. All right, let's take it out of the oven. Ooh, and you can leave it in there a little bit longer if you want. See how the cheese has gotten bubbly and brown. And the tortillas have cooked and absorbed some of the flavors. I'm just gonna cut into this monkey. Monkey! Why monkeys? Why monkeys are cool. Okay. So I just wanna show you this real quick. Might get a little closer. Close. Tortillas with the zucchini and the meat and the cheese sauce. Oh my goodness. Very good. It's not super spicy, but it has that little kick. And it's got that creaminess without too much cheese in there. So really, how can you have too much cheese, right? Delicious. And the zucchini still has a little bit of a crunch to it. So you get some cool texture. This is delicious. So go enjoy this. You can add some tortilla chips with this. Maybe some beautiful black beans to go with the black and white and green and good and evil theme. And I'm going to go finish this. And I hope you have a great week. And I will see you next week on Nothing.